Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. We stopped at a point where we were trying to go for the Mach number of the flow behind a moving shock wave. We were trying to find that and uh, we already did the expression for it and we said that it can go anywhere between 0 to some high value depending on the gamma it is asymptoting to some saturation value. It can be 0 which is very low subsonic, okay. ideally it could be 0 if it is a very weak compression wave and if it is a strong enough wave then it goes to a maximum value, I will write that down about. I will keep writing it as m 2 induced by the shock is given by 2 by gamma times gamma minus 1, we did this last class, this uh, I have to say it tends to, it is not the only value, this is the highest value, the asymptote that it will reach finally, that is what it will become. So, and we also saw that uh, if my wave is really, really, really weak, then this number will go to 0. So, my actual induced Mach number will go anywhere between 0 to this value, that is what we are seeing. And uh, we already saw that if it is more compressible gas, then the induced flow will be higher that is where we were, it will respond better to the compression, okay. that is the way it is supposed to be looked at, okay. it, is, it will respond more if it is a compressible fluid. Okay. Now we wrote a huge expression for this, I will write that one again, multiplied by I am folding the expression here. This is the expression and now I asked you this one nice question what should be the P2 by P1 value for my incoming shock, the moving shock such that the induced flow is just sonic, okay. that is when it is going anywhere between subsonic to some supersonic value. We wanted to see, of course you should know that this is always going to be more than 1, okay. how do you know that? This is a number less than 1 in the denominator that will make this number more than 2. And this number is never more than 1.6. So, I can tell that this whole number is always more than 1. Square root of a number more than 1 will still be more than 1. That is why this number is always supersonic. Okay. So, I know that if I increase, if I make my P2 by P1 equal to 1, then M2 induced will become 0, and that is happening because of this term. We saw this already last class. Okay. This will P2 by P1 will become 1, which will mean gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 plus 1, here again this becomes 1, gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 plus 1, this whole ratio becomes 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I am getting this to be 0. Now, I am saying 
that is if p2 by p1 is 1 that is no pressure across no pressure jump across my compression wave a very weak compression wave. If I have a very strong compression wave then we said that this whole expression tends to this value okay. we saw that already. Now we want to find when this m2 induced goes past 1 what should be my minimum p2 by p1 such that the flow goes to m equal to 1 behind the shock okay. that is the way we want to look at it and uh, to do this I tried solving this expression it was very complex I found that finally it is not easy to write an expression such that I will invert this and say p2 by p1 in terms of m2 induced not easy to write. So what we will do is we will go to the graphical method it is not very serious thing for our course we do not need to solve it algebraically. So we will just go to a graphical method so we will go to the screen. Okay, we will first look at uh, shock Mach number which is Ws by A1 which we looked at last time the Mach number with which that particular pressure wave which is corresponding to this P2 by P1 is moving into a stagnant gas that is what is given here. So if I say my P2 by P1 is 1 I did not plot for less than 1 okay, that does not make sense for us okay. so P2 by P1 is 1 otherwise it is an expansion fan we do not want to talk about it this compression it goes from 1 all the way to I have given up to 100 p2 by p1 compression ratio what we are seeing is as I increase my p2 by p1 my shock mark number increases this is what we already saw last time we said that it is proportional to p2 by p1 square root so it will keep on going up and it looks like a square root curve obviously it is just a square root of p2 by p1 multiplied by a constant that is what it looks like now what we are seeing is for different gamma values gamma equal to 1.67 is the lowest shock mark number okay. it is the least compressible gas okay. and gamma equal to 1.3 is the most compressible gas. So it looks like compression wave travels faster in a compressible medium than in a non compressible medium or a less compressible medium okay. that is what it looks like okay. that is what we are seeing here. and of course the remaining properties of if my strength is higher it travels faster is also present here I will go to the next one we were looking for induced Mach number this velocity will come back to it induced Mach number okay. this is the induced Mach number behind that is the my shock has gone past the velocity is V2 divided by the heated gas is now having a speed of sound A2 V2 by A2 is this M2 and with respect to my p2 by p1 across the shock I am starting from 1 all the way to 100 I am going and in this side what we are seeing is for a large time it is just say up to p2 by p1 of 4 or so all the gamma values are going to give you only subsonic solution so my p2 by p1 is only around 4 it will give only subsonic solution behind the shock okay and you can also see that it starts from 0 which is what we saw when p2 by p1 is 1 induced Mach number is 0 we just told that today and it asymptotes to a constant value for different gamma values it is different because we saw that it is a function of gamma square root of 2 divided by gamma times gamma minus 1. So that is the function you will get finally one more thing we want to show is when I increase my p2 by p1 we saw that shock Mach number increases. So I can replace this axis with shock mark number if I want by using the previous plot and what I will see will be as my shock mark number increases I find that not much change happens if my shock mark number is high enough I will go back to the previous plot let us look at the number p2 by p1 of 60 and above we will go back to the previous plot if I have a 60 and above that corresponds to Mach number of 7 and above roughly for all gamma values okay. what we are seeing is if my Mach number is 7 and above my induced M2 is almost a fixed number irrespective of what my P2 by P1 is what my Mach number is that is what we are finally getting to okay. so I am giving you a lot of uh, hints towards hypersonic flow theory okay. 
in hypersonic flows typically things do not depend on Mach number, okay. nothing depends on Mach number of the flow, finally it will come down to that, everything asymptotes to constant value most of them, okay. that is one more hint here given to you, we will not deal with hypersonic flows much here, I will just tell you like this once in a while, so many places I already told you when Mach number increases things become constant. So, again I want to see one more thing, if my gamma changes from 1.3 to 1.4 to 1.67, what we are finding is the highest induced Mach number happens for 1.3, a compressible gas responds with running faster behind the shock compared to a not so compressible gas, that is what you are seeing here, not so compressible gas has a very low speed behind the shock. Now, I have some numbers calculated from this plot actually, I just wanted to put those numbers in, we will go back to the board. If I find out at what point this m 2 induced becomes 1 for each of these gamma values, p 2 by p 1, I will put uh, as a table. If I look at p 2 by p 1 value for gamma equal to 1.3, that is 4.034, 4.823 and this is 9.36 and if I look at uh, m of shock, that corresponds to 1.92 this is from the other plot using p 2 by p 1 in the other plot 2.067, 2.77, okay. this is what we are seeing. If I want a supersonic flow behind my shock for gamma equal to 1.3 gas, my p 2 by p 1 should be 4.03, which is what we roughly observed already in the plot, I said it should be above 4 for it to go supersonic roughly, that is what you are seeing. If it is 1.4, we are seeing it to be 4.8, if it is 1.67, unless I force it really, really hard, it does not want to go supersonic, unless I go more than 9.4, it does not want to go supersonic, okay. unless I compress the gas really hard, it does not want to move, does not want to move supersonic, does not want to go high speed. Okay. I need to force it more if it is a less compressible gas, that is what I am seeing here. Overall, I am telling you only one statement last few classes, when I compare across gamma, I am telling the gas responds better to waves if it is a more compressible gas, if it is a less compressible gas, it does not respond to the waves better, that is what you are seeing overall. If my shock Mach number is 1.2 itself, that is enough to create supersonic flow behind in 1.3. If it is 1.67, I need to have 2.7 Mach number, okay. that is the way it goes okay. and uh, only when I compress it with this 9.36 for this less compressible gas, it goes at least to 2.7 Mach number, but I compress it by half, it goes close to 2, okay. shock can move faster relatively in a more compressible gas. Again, that is coming from these numbers, I am comparing numbers like this. Okay. Now, uh, I want to go and look at the actual velocity values, actual velocity values induced behind the flow, that is the next thing I want to see. Okay. Uh, oh, but before that I wanted one more observation. Okay. When I think about most of these plots, I showed that if my P2 by P1 is not strong enough, it still sends out a wave that is supersonic travelling, we found that shock Mach number was always more than 1 for any p 2 by p 1 more than 1, but it induces a flow less than 1, a Mach number will be very small behind the flow. Examples, clap my hand, you hear that sound, that is a sharp sound, that is a shock moving past your ear. Okay. People have done Schlieren experiments of clapping and they found that there will be shock waves going from your hand. How is the shock wave created? I am compressing the gas in between my hands and I am making it go to very high pressures locally, 
and it escapes through a corner, it finds a hole and escapes. When it escapes, there is an interface between the high pressure gas and the outside low pressure gas. So, that causes this P2 by P1, the energy is transferred from this high pressure gas to the low pressure gas and that is going to send out a compression wave. That gas is going and telling information to the outside world that this region has high pressure, that is the overall thing that is happening, that shock is going that way. And the flow behind it, we know it is not supersonic flow, okay. when I do this, the paper itself does not want to move so much, but I still create supersonic flow, I create a shock wave. Is not going very seriously fast behind flow behind is not very seriously fast. Okay. So, that being said, when I think about any unsteady change in the flow, I am again inducing you to think more towards unsteady direction because that is the current day requirement for gas dynamics people, that is what is missing in gas dynamics world. People do not know how to think unsteady, okay. they are all so much trained in steady gas dynamics. So, I want to induce more and more of unsteady. In it. So, when I think about I want to make any change in gas, I send out a pressure pulse, if it is a compression wave, if there is any compression required P2 by P1 is at least more than one even a little bit, there is a shock going, it will be a very weak shock that the P2 by P1 may be very very small and the flow behind need not be supersonic, it will be just a very small value, it could even be 1 centimeter per second, okay. because we know if P2 by P1 is 1, it is 0 value, 0 meter per second. So, 1 centimeter per second is more than 0, I can have such a flow field also. Okay. So, any unsteady phenomenon, if I have a pressure increase and there is a compression wave moving into some flow field, then I am creating flow behind it in the direction of the wave and it could be any value between 0 to some high asymptote value, which is equal to square root of 2 times 2 divided by gamma times gamma minus 1 which is what we saw already today. Okay. All this you just need to remember, I am just going to reiterate this several times, finally when you are going to unsteady gas dynamics towards the end of this course, you should be ready and you will just say oh yeah, that is what we have been talking all this time and then we will just accept whatever I am telling, that is what it should become later. Okay. So, I am just priming you for that. Now, we will go and look at, uh, it is not just uh, the velocity induced is not just related to what is happening in the shock and the gamma value on the P2 by P1, it also depends on the speed of sound in the medium in which it is moving, there is also one more factor. So, I calculated the actual V2 value, the velocity behind the shock and uh, if you go look at the formula, it has a A1 in it. V2 is equal to A1 times a big function of gamma and Mach number, uh, gamma and P2 by P1 sorry, you will get such a big function, we wrote it last class. Okay. So, you will get such a big function there, now we want to go look at that V2, okay. I called it induced velocity here, let us go to that picture, oh, it is here and I have chosen different gases and T1 equal to 300 Kelvin, I will have to use the mouse for people on video. So, T1 equal to 300 Kelvin, that is the, in, the gas that is still is having 300 Kelvin temperature and I have chosen different gases, I said gamma equal to 1.3 for H2O and CO2, it is roughly true, one is 1.29, other is 1.308 something, it is all almost there, that kind of numbers, we will just use 1.3 for both and they have different molecular weights one is 44, other is 18, very different numbers okay. and because of that you are getting speed of sound to be very different even though T1 is the same, I am giving the speed of sound just next to it, 424.4 meter per second, CO2 is having 271 meters per second, air I am having 348 meter per second. If I have gamma equal to 1.6, I have picked two noble gases, helium and argon very different in molecular weight, one is 4, other is 40 okay. and again you are seeing helium being very light is having very high speed of sound, okay, because the R will have a denominator molecular weight and so it is going to be very, very high value. Okay. And then argon is heavy, 
so it is going to be having lower speed of sound that is what you are having finally. Now we will go look at uh, let us say we will pick gamma equal to 1.3 the two cases blue and green alone blue is here green is here both are same gamma now it is not effect of compressibility we are just looking at effect of molecular weight ok. When the gas is heavier it is not moving faster I would call it inertia in my opinion ok I am pumping in energy through the shock and it does not want to go fast it wants to go slower it is a heavier mass it is moving slower ok simple way to look at it that is a easy answer ok. If you want to go give a complicated answer A 1 is lesser A 1 is lesser does not give me any physical feel but when the heavier gas gives me a lot of physical feel heavier gas is more difficult to push even though I spent the same energy it does not want to go with the same velocity it is lesser velocity ok kinetic energy of the flow may be the same but it is having lesser velocity density is higher for CO2 of course ok. So, kinetic energy may be the same in both cases I did not plot that may be I should plot it next time and show you okay. but that is what it looks like Maybe you can plot it by yourself not that difficult to do this. Now, if I look at uh, gamma equal to 1.67 those two cases helium and argon this is your light blue color and the other one is I do not know what color it is some color I think it is this one ok. So, I am picking this case and this bottom most case again speed of sound is making a huge difference, but same observation helium is a very light gas and it is moving extremely fast for the same p 2 by p 1 okay. it is moving extremely fast I cannot tell it is a gamma effect as of now I am not looking at gamma right now okay. it is the same gamma it is doing this. Now we will go look at mixed gamma I know that argon is 40 and CO 2 is 44 they are close we will pick that particular case it is almost same molecular weight very different gamma values one CO 2 is more compressible than argon. So, green versus the last one they are seemingly here ok there is the effect of gamma here a little bit, but predominantly it is having the effect of molecular weight ok because CO 2 is having a lesser speed of sound than this and that is having some effect ok. If it is exactly same molecular weight probably this will be a little higher CO 2 is 44 argon is 40 if both were 40 this will be a little higher and then you will just see the effect of gamma which is a more compressible gas will be pushed faster that is what you are seeing here also it is too close that is all. Now, in the middle I have air I do not have any other comparison for air I could have put in ethylene I thought about it only now C 2 H 4 has the same molecular weight almost 28 it will have I did not plot that, but if I put C 2 H 4 the gamma value will not be 1.4 it will go to some 1.26. So, I did not want to think about it too much uh, there is no good companion for air to compare. So, we just left it as is I could have used oxygen it will be almost the same gamma is 1.4 28.8 will become 32 not much of a difference. So, it will look like this kind of curve even closer. So, I did not want to plot it ok, but the two observations we have from this one is if it is a more compressible gas it is going to be moving faster okay, for the same p 2 by p 1 and t 1. If it is lighter molecular weight it will travel faster okay, those are the two observations I am getting from this. Now, I want to go look at the other properties which we did not look at till now ok other properties I want to go to the board and derive the formula before I go and use it. So, I will go here I want to look at uh, p naught 2 by p naught 1 across a shock p naught 2 by p naught 1 is less than 1 for a shock fixed coordinate system which is what we have been seeing p naught decreases across a shock we used to say. Now, I am going to say the opposite ok we will see why after this I am deriving the formula for it p naught 2 by p naught 1. I can write this as p naught 2 by p 1 why my Mach number for my gas 1 that is the incoming gas is 0 right. So, p naught 1 by p 1 is 1 
1 plus gamma minus 1, it is a stagnant gas. So, P1 is same as P01, it is stagnant gas, stagnation pressure is same as static pressure. So, I am having this. Now, I want to write this the favorite way of gas dynamics people cyclic ratios most of the books will use this cyclic ratios very nice way to express things okay. now we know this because i know induced mach number m2 so i'll write this as 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 m2 induced square to the power gamma by gamma minus 1, this is the same formula, nothing changing, <laughs> multiplied by P2 by P1. Now, of course, M2 induced, we wrote a huge formula just some time back in terms of P2 by P1. Okay. So, the whole expression in terms of P2 by P1, I can get. Okay. Now, we want to go look at what this plot looks like, then we will talk more. this is my P naught 2 by P naught 1. Okay. I did not uh, put it very clearly near 0, actually let us use the mouse. Here, if I zoom in, it starts from 1 on the y axis. Okay. It starts from 1 on the x axis, it starts from 1 on the y axis, this is the last point I have. Okay. Starts from 1 on the x axis, so starts from 1 on the y axis. Since I have numbers like 1000, that 1 is diminishing to look like 0, it is almost 0 in this scale, that is all is happening. Okay. Anyways, so if I look at it, if my P2 by P1 is 1, there is no change in the flow, which means P01 is same as P02, that is true. But after that, any higher P2 by P1, that is if I send a reasonably compressing, uh, compressing wave, then we find that P02 is higher than P01, why? That is the question we want to answer next. Why is it higher? Typically, it is supposed to be lower when it is processed by a normal shock. This is higher. Why is that? All this time in normal shock, we have been discussing stuff and we said P02 is less than P01 always. Now, we have the opposite case. Why is this happening? It is of course, related to reference frame shift, something more is happening. I think physically it is easier to answer than going for mathematical expressions. I just plotted this, I know M2 induced in terms of P2 by P1, I plotted this as a function, this as a function of P2 by P1, that is all I did, where I know M2 induced in terms of P2 by P1. I used that calculated P naught 2 by P naught 1 for a whole bunch of P 2 by P 1, I plotted this curve. Now, we are finding that this is always greater than 1, I will say greater than or equal to 1. Now, we want to explain this, that is the goal for us finally. So, how will I explain this? So, what we are seeing, if I have a stream tube and I have a moving shock in it, the main difference is the shock is moving the gas here is stationary and here the gas is moving, which means first thing velocity is higher, second thing pressure is also higher. Okay. Basically, I took a gas which has only pressure energy, no kinetic energy and gave it pressure energy and kinetic energy. When I do that, if I bring this gas to rest, through a imaginary isentropic process, the way we discussed uh, stagnation pressure, when I do that, all that extra kinetic energy which I gave to the gas should also be converted to pressure energy, right. Imaginary isentropic process making the gas to stagnate, which means kinetic energy is converted to pressure energy. When I do that, I will find that already pressure is high, I added all the kinetic energy in terms of pressure energy, so it will be much higher. That is the reason this should be more than 1 if it is a moving shock based flow. P02 by P01 should be greater than 1 for this flow. Okay. This is something very different from ordinary gas dynamics, normal shock, shock fixed coordinate system, where we will tell that the shock absorbs some energy 
and sends the gas with lesser energy, net pressure energy is lesser, P naught 2 is less than P naught 1. In a moving shock system, P naught 2 is greater than P naught 1, that is what it will come down to. Okay. That being said, we want to look at uh, T naught 2 by T naught 1, stagnation temperature ratio. And of course, stagnant gas, so I can rewrite this as T naught 2 by T 1. And uh, I will expand this T naught 2 for a uh, C p equal to constant, a calorically perfect gas. T naught 2 will become T 2 plus V 2 square by 2 C p. This whole thing divided by T 1, this is what I will have. Now, I can rewrite this C p, which we have been doing all this time anyway it will become gamma r by gamma minus 1, where I will pull this gamma r t 1 as a 1 square okay. and we already wrote an expression for, I will write this once more, t 2 by t 1 plus v 2 by a 1 square multiplied by gamma minus 1 by 2, this is what I will have. And uh, if you go back to last class, you will find that V2 by A1, we wrote an expression for this. We wrote V2 in terms of A1 and P2 by P1. Okay. So, now if I put all this together, I am going to write that expression anyway today. T02 by T01, it is again a big expression. T2 by T1, we know this already from normal shock itself. plus gamma minus 1 by 2 times V 2 by A 1 square. So, that is going to be gamma plus 1 by 2 gamma P 2 by P 1 plus gamma minus 1 by 2 gamma. It used to have a square root on the top, now I have removed that because there is a square multiplied by, I will write the next term below. So, I will say that term is here 1 minus gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 plus P 2 by P 1, this is a numerator divided by gamma plus 1 by gamma minus 1 times P 2 by P 1 plus 1. This did not have a square in V 2 by A 1, so now I will put a square on top of this term. So, it is T naught 2 by T naught 1 is T 2 by T 1 multiplied by gamma minus 1 by 2 multiplied by this term is your W s by A 1 by the way, W s by A 1 square that is this multiplied by this is your U 2 by U 1, 1 minus U 2 by U 1 square that is what you are getting finally, okay. that is your whole expression. If you go back remember the derivation you will see that this is 1 minus U 2 by U 1, this is your W s by A 1 square and this is your gamma minus 1 by 2 is coming from here this is your T 2 by T 1 coming from normal shock tables itself, this is normal shock relations itself. Okay. What do we expect in this case? T naught 2 by T naught 1, will it be less than 1 or more than 1 or equal to 1? That is the next question. Physically speaking, what should it be? physical field is more important for us. Physically speaking, T naught 2 by T naught 1, what should it be? Less than 1, more than 1, equal to 1? More than 1, why? P naught 2 is greater, do not link that, it is a non isentropic process. You cannot say P naught 2 increase, so T naught 2 will be higher. P naught increase, so T naught increases. We cannot say that, it is non isentropic process. Only for isentropic process, if pressure increases, temperature increases. I cannot say that here. So, you cannot give that answer, but your answer is correct. Give me some other answer. What is that? Velocity is higher, V2 is more than V1, V1 was 0, V2 is some non zero value, and T2 is more than T1. Shock has heated the gas. 
So, if I look at uh, going to stagnation through a imaginary process taking the gas to stagnation condition enthalpy plus kinetic energy. Now, I am saying enthalpy increased kinetic energy increased. So, the net stagnation temperature increased. Okay. So, that is the way we have to look at it I am energizing the gas. So, T naught 2 will be more than T naught 1 if it is a shock phase coordinates T naught 2 by T naught 1 will become 1. That is what it will be. Okay. This is not shock fixed coordinates. So, you are getting all these kind of results. Okay. That is the difference. Okay. If it is shock fixed coordinates, you will suddenly get that this will become Ws by A1. Oh, I cannot tell that directly from here. We just leave it like this. You can go think about how to make this go to shock fixed coordinates. It is not easy. I have to I subtract another term. When I subtract that term, this whole thing will become 1. Let us not worry about that here. I thought I can do that simply it is not possible. Okay. Now, we will go look at the plot of T naught 2 by T naught 1 for this which one is it oh, it is here. Okay. What we are seeing in this case again I am plotting P 2 by P 1 going from 1 all the way to 100 and T naught 2 by T naught 1 of course, is starting at 1 like every other plot. Okay, if P 2 by P 1 is 1 there is no change in T naught T naught 1 T naught 1 is equal to T naught 2 because it is it is a very weak wave no change in the gas. Okay. Now, as I increase my P 2 by P 1 you are finding that T naught 2 by T naught 1 is increasing, but look at the numbers this is like going from 1 to 40 or 1 to 45 while P naught 2 by P naught 1 went all the way up to 1000. Okay. So, again we can say that uh, enthalpy energy added is not as high as the pressure energy added it is a compression wave of course, pressure energy added should be more that is what you are seeing. Okay. And one more way to look at it supersonic flow responds very fast to responds very fast by changing its pressure than changing its temperature which we have been seeing all through even from isentropic flow onwards we always saw that pressure was changing faster than temperature and density will always be somewhere in the middle. I did not plot rho 2 by rho 1 if you want you can plot that also it will be somewhere in the middle, okay. but anyways this is the idea here we are seeing something opposite. Okay. Gamma equal to 1.67 is the topmost. gamma equal to 1.3 is the least okay. all this time we said uh, let us go look at the previous curve P naught 2 by P naught 1 where is P naught 2 by P naught 1 uh, here. If I look at P naught 2 by P naught 1 also I say that most compressible gas will get most compressed or it will be more energized, but now when I look at T naught 2 by T naught 1 it is giving the opposite result. Okay. This is the only change if I have to explain this I have to go into how molecule uses the energy inside okay. it is something to do with internal energy it is related to C p that is how it is related to internal energy it has to do something to do with C p and that is something to do with gamma that is why you are having this effect. It so happens that the way by which gamma is increasing is by decreasing the number of internal energy modes okay. that is molecule can use the energy to just move or it can rotate about its center of mass or it can vibrate about its center of mass or electrons can move to higher energy levels there are so many things that are possible. Okay. How does the gas use its energy will decide its C p value and that is decided by the actual energy present in the gas itself if there is too much energy it will give it to all the possible energy modes if there is not enough energy it will not give it to all the energy modes. Okay. So, when the temperature is high you can expect C p to change when the temperature is low not other modes are available it will just be a one fixed value that is what is most commonly used in our gas dynamics where we say gamma is constant we used calorically perfect gas we are going to say gamma is constant there. Okay. But in here we are seeing that when there is more energy modes the temperature drops that does not mean the energy is dropped really, but I cannot prove it here for you. If I look at enthalpy like H naught 2 by H naught 1 you will find that it will be following our regular expression 
the CP is higher and so it looks like it has dropped that is what has happened here. Okay. If I look at H02 by H01 and plot that blue will be the topmost, green will be in the middle, red will be the lowest then it will explain everything for us okay. then it will look like more compressible gas will be more energized that is logical for us. This looks like it is opposite simply because more compressible gas has higher CP and I have divided by the CP for the higher condition and it has dropped the other way that is what we are seeing currently. Okay. Maybe I should have shown you also H02 by H01, but you have the expression you just go and plot it, it is very easy to plot. Okay. So, we will just leave it like that for you. Okay. Of course, you have to know that uh, when it is higher temperature the CP value changes, if I use constant CP there is no difference H02 by H01 is same as T02 by T01, okay. but I cannot explain it in any other way as of now we will just leave it like this ok. This is the only one curve which does not explain our statement or uh, it does not go along with our statement of a more compressible gas will be more energized by a moving shock ok. It is the only thing that is going against. We will look at the only thing left only variable left in our flow field entropy change. Here we have the delta S by R uh, curve uh, for uh, various P2 by P1 for the moving shock for uh, different gammas as usual. Uh, if we look at the curve it is like almost going flat for some time for low P2 by P1 s and then it is going up and steadying out uh, as we go to very high P2 by P1 values. Uh, what we are saying is if we just look at uh, gamma value high which is uh, least compressible gas it does not take up a lot of entropy and uh, when it is uh, most compressible gas it takes up a lot of entropy that is like the bribe which we will talk about later. Uh, the the function how did we calculate this we remember we derived sometime back uh, delta s by r for normal shocks uh, to be uh, equal to log of uh, t naught 2 by t naught 1 to the power uh, gamma by gamma minus 1 multiplied by p naught 1 by p naught 2 the whole inside the log that function is what we will use a long time back uh, we made the t naught 2 by t naught 1 1 and then we got the expression for normal shock delta s by r. Now, we cannot make t naught 2 by t naught 1 equal to 1 because we just saw the previous curve t naught 2 by t naught 1 will be changing with various moving shocks ok. That is the main modification. Now, we will go to the next plot which is a zoomed in version of this one. I just wanted to show this little detail here where we are seeing this uh, for small changes in P2 by P1 that is weak moving shocks we find that the entropy is not at all increasing or it is very very negligible and this is the regime where acoustics people work. This is basically the regime where we say it is almost uh, isentropic compression wave and this is that region and beyond that point it is not true say if my P2 by P1 is something like 1.4 or above that will not be the case and that is the main change I wanted to talk about here. And then again we see that I uh, go back to the previous curve I am going to say that the delta S by R is not going to a constant it is going to be increasing continuously ok and that is related to we just saw that T naught 2 continuously increases as we go to uh, higher speeds of the wave ok and again I am saying that more compressible gas draws more energy into entropy which means more compressible gas will waste more energy from my shock. The shock will be dissipated faster in a more compressible gas even though it is getting energized fast it will get dissipated faster also because entropy is one form of waste of energy in my way or I want to call it entropy as uh, the bribe we have to give to nature for the gas to do what we want it to do ok. That is the way we want to look at entropy any system let us say I take refrigerator common example for entropy in thermodynamics ok. For me to take energy from a system that is already cold and send it out to a hotter section for it is against nature, but we want it to happen. So, for this to happen I have to supply energy where is all this energy going there is actually net energy balance across right whatever energy is taken from the cold section is going to the hot section, but I am pumping energy extra every time why am I wasting electricity that extra energy is directly going to satisfying nature that is the bribe I am giving nature continuously. So, that it is keep on cooling that gas keep on cooling in this case the ice box or whatever inside the fridge the same thing here in this case 
I want this compression wave to compress the gas and the gas should move away from the high pressure section go towards the low pressure section that was the use of my compression wave anyway right it was going and telling there is high pressure here get away from here that was the information the shock is taking away. So, when it is taking that information for the gas to follow this somebody has to give bribe to this nature that is done by this entropy ok. You are finding that if the gas is more compressible I have to give a little more bribe that is what it says ok. I call it bribe here because very immediately easy to understand for us ok. You will never forget it if this is the case ok. Nature wants bribe in the form of entropy increase any process that is naturally occurring is occurring because there is some entropy increase S somebody is paying some energy to nature so that it is happening ok. I take this chalk and drop it on the ground entropy increases it produces sound when it hits the table entropy increases everywhere I am wasting energy how I wasted energy I added the energy by increasing its potential energy and letting go that is how I started ok. If you go and do the thermodynamic analysis of this you will find that there is some energy imbalance. The collision that happens on the table is not energy conserving collision that extra energy part of it goes to entropy increase part of it goes to creating the shock you are going to hear that sharp sound when this goes and hits the, the chalk hits the uh, desk. When that sharp sound comes that is creating a strong compression wave and behind that there is flow. If I drop a book on the table it is a reasonable sound I have actually seen Schlieren pictures of dropping a book on the ground it produces nice shock waves on the sides you can go find it on the web it is available go find such things it is nice E fluids I think is where I saw I am not sure there are so many websites like this E fluids is one such nice website where you can see lot of gallery of fluid mechanics fun stuff yeah. there are other websites also I, I remember this one first how stuff works is another where they give a lot of stuff like this yeah. there are so many other websites I should not be advertising websites on NPTEL probably but anyways we won't worry about that so much okay. anyways so that is the way we have to look at entropy change the next thing we have to do actually I am going to close moving shock discussion here except for I will start solving problems actually numerical examples ok. I think I can finish one numerical example today so I will push it we okay. will try and solve one problem today that is just it says 3 minutes I will probably take 4 to 5 minutes and finish it off okay. uh, I am going to pick a simple case we did not solve any problem using normal shock also so we will first go and do problems with stationary shock wave we will not do moving shock today we will do it next class. So, I am starting with a big chamber with uh, pressure of 10 bar and temperature of 300 Kelvin this is the condition which we have in our gas dynamics lab I am just using that condition directly here okay. and uh, I put P naught and T naught while I told you pressure and temperature why I am going to say the velocity is inside this tank the tank is so big and the mass flow rate out of this is very small that the velocities are almost close to 0 and so I will call this my stagnation condition and I am saying there is a small pipe and there is a nozzle conversion diversion nozzle sitting at there and there is a shock sitting at I know the location and I am going to tell that it is sitting at half the area ratio of the exit area. The nozzle is designed for m exit design equal to 4 and I am going to tell the shock is sitting at A by A star of the shock is 
half of a x z by a star. These are the information given. Now, I want you to find the exit pressure and the exit velocity. This is what you need to find. Okay. So, we have to know that uh, if there is a shock here and there is stagnation here, Mach number goes from 0 to sonic to supersonic and then there is a shock. So, I know that the choked the nozzle here is choked, I am introducing a word which you should not know as of now. Okay. All I know is the Mach number is 1 at the throat, that is what we know as of now. Okay. So, if I know that uh, Mach number here is 1, okay. now you want to find out what is the Mach number at this location, which is my shock location, this is my star condition because I know Mach number is 1 somewhere there. So, it is the star condition. So, I can say of course, we will go and solve again CD nozzle problems later. I just wanted to pick this as an example and solve it. Okay. Now, I want to find the conditions here. I want to find the Mach number just ahead of the shock. It is a very thin layer. So, I will use the same A e by a, a, a by A star for the shock. A by A star, I will go look at my compressible flow tables. I want a supersonic Mach number for it. I can get a subsonic or supersonic Mach number for A by A star. I will get the supersonic value and that comes out to be 5.36. This happens to be your shock Mach number or Mach number just ahead of the shock. Okay, this is equal to M1 for shock. From here, I will go to normal shock tables. This information I got from isentropic flow tables. Now, I will go to normal shock tables. I will find M2 for shock. M2 for shock, I will put in this number. I am assuming it is air gamma equal to 1.4. I have to look at tables corresponding to gamma equal to 1.4. I am going to get 0 0.462. Okay. And uh, since we are interested in pressure at the exit, I also want to carry over the other information. P naught 2 by P naught 1 across that shock. Okay. That information is, uh, oh, I made a mistake. I did not give you the Mach number itself, sorry. I have to, I will take a step back. I made one mistake. When this is the case, it is half of 10.72. This is the first point where I have to start. A by A star for m equal to 4 corresponds to 10.72 from isentropic flow tables. Half of that is 5.36. This is equal to and this if I go back and look at isentropic tables, this is going to give you a Mach number of 3.25. This is my shock Mach number. I made a mistake already. Everything else is correct. If I go look at normal shock tables for this Mach number, I am going to get this and P02 by P01 across the shock is going to be 0 0.2645. Okay. I am getting these numbers. Once I know this, the remaining stuff is downstream of this shock is subsonic flow and area is varying in a subsonic flow. That is all I need to look at now subsonic flow and it is varying area is varying in a subsonic flow. So, so when I look at uh, it is the same area area there, but my Mach number changed. I will go and find this for this Mach number what my A by A star is. A by A star for m equal to 0 0.462, that number comes out to be 1.42, okay. which means my A star across the shock has changed. 
we'll just keep it like that we'll go talk about it more later this will tell me that a exit by a star which is supposed to be twice that value because shock is sitting at half the area is going to be 2.84 if i go and look at isentropic tables again that is going to give me exit mark number it is supposed to be subsonic flow it will become more subsonic than this and that value comes out to be 0.21 now i am almost done i want pressure at the exit i know p not at the exit is equal to p not 2 because the remaining problem is isentropic flow only at the shock it is non isentropic we know the p not 2 value because we know p not 2 by p not 1 0.2645 multiplied by p not 1 which is 10 bar so it is 2.645 bar so now i'll go and look at uh, p not 2 by p uh, p not by p for mach number at exit which is 0.21 okay if i look at that number that is 1.031 i know p not is this value i want p so it will be p not divided by 1.031 will be my p value therefore p exit equal to 2.645 divided by 1.031 which is 2.57 bar this is my exit pressure only one more thing exit temperature t not by t for this mark number exit mark number of 0.21 is 1.00088 okay and uh, this tells me that te is i am using 300 kelvin because there is no change across t not at change across a shock for t02 t01 and t02 are same because we are using shock fixed coordinates and i'm having this divided by this value 1.0088 that's going to give me 297.4 kelvin from here i have to find speed of sound and then multiply with mach number and i am getting velocity a at exit is square root of 1.4 into 288.6 into 297.4 that is giving me 346.6 meter per second i know my m exit is 0.21 so my u exit is going to be product of these two as going to be 72.8 meter per second so i just used both isentropic flows and normal shock tables to get to pressure and velocity at the exit okay so we'll solve more problems next class we'll stop here for today